I want to talk about um, Second Corinthians twelve nine, and he said to me that my grace is sufficient for you, but my strength is made perfect in weakness. How many of you feeling strong this morning? How many of you feeling weak? What does weak really mean? Is weak a terminology that we bound around in our lifestyle today? You don't really hear, particularly as a man, me walking around saying, I'm a weak man. No. If I did do that, I'd probably be, be vulnerable, I'd probably be exposed. But we all have weaknesses. But we tend to want to sometimes cover up our weaknesses because we want to portray an image. I know for me, um, I don't like showing my weaknesses. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't like showing my weaknesses because I know simply people take advantage of that. Um, so how do we be true to ourselves? Well, Christ says, he said his grace is sufficient for us and his strength is made perfect in weakness. So those of us who live by faith and go against the world, the logic of the, the Christian faith is different from the logic of the world. So in the world, if I'm portraying weakness, I'm vulnerable and I'm exposed. But in the Christian faith, by presenting my weakness to God, I'm empowered. <laughs> So trying to reconcile supernatural faith with the logic of this world does not work. So this is where we get confused. Sometimes we try and have one aspect of our thinking still in the world, but still think we're in the mindset of the spiritual realm. Well, if your mindset is still in the, in, in, in the world, it's not in the spiritual you see, the Lord regulates whoever is first to the last seats. And while the last are given the first seats, the greatest will serve the least. So whoever wants to save their life will obviously lose it. So who loves their life? <laughs> I suppose we all do it, don't we? Does any of us really want to lose our life? No, but again, God's standards and God's ways are totally different to ours. And even the power of God is made perfect in weakness. You see, in light of this, Paul realized that his weakness was a sign of strength. And it was empowered by this faith, he said, he said, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than the power that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses. For sake, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm made strong. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. I love that because it's so powerful. It is so powerful because through the humiliations that Paul suffered, he learned that the humble will be exalted. 
and the proud will be humiliated. One of the greatest uh, um, sayings that I've, I learned in 12-step recovery is if you don't get humble, you will get humiliated. And in the kingdom of God, those who want to win, lose. While those who don't mind losing, win. You see, the exact opposite, the exact opposite of the rules of this world, that if you feel weak, humiliated or defeated, know that it's the perfect moment for God's power to be made perfect in you. It's time that we pick ourselves up and go forward because God is with you. He is with you. He is with you. And it's so beautiful knowing that in my weakness, God is with me. In my infirmities, God is with me. In my lack, God is with me. In my difficulties, God is with me. I just think that's so powerful. I think it's so powerful because we know in this passage leading up to this, Paul was talking about the fawns in the flesh. And we learn from many previous lessons, particularly from verse 7 in one uh, Second Corinthians 12. Verse 7, we learn the precious lesson that first of all, it's proof that even divine revelation of the, the Lord does not correct the flesh. Hmm. Say that again. Even divine revelation of the Lord does not correct the flesh. Even after Paul had listened to the language, he still had the old nature and was in danger of falling into the snares of pride, into the clutches of his old nature. And he knew he had a thorns in the flesh. How Job, Job learned these lessons. What's the thorn in the flesh? What is the fawn in the flesh that's maybe in your life? And how do you see that fawn in the flesh? Well, it's interesting that the scripture says that we need to examine ourselves. All we can say for sure is that it's some bodily trial that you might be going through. We certainly know there was a bodily trial going on in Paul's life and God allowed it to come into Paul's life. There's no doubt that the Lord personally failed to specify exactly what the form was. But we know it was there. And the apostle described the form in the flesh as a messenger of Satan to buffet him. In one sense, it represented an effort on Satan's part to hinder Paul's work in the work of the Lord. But we know that God is greater than Satan. So when Satan tries to hinder you in your defects, we need to look to God. That's why step six says we can surrender all to him. It says we can give it to him. We can own that weakness and ask God to take it away. Why? Because we know when we get humble, we can be successful in our service to, God, to Christ because we're more dependent upon him rather than on our own strength. And that's why it's important to surrender our weaknesses over to him because we become more dependent on him rather than on our own strength. 
Paul was humble. Oh boy. He wanted more. And three times the apostle Paul prayed to God that this thorn in the flesh might be taken away. Hello, Natalie. How you doing? And in verse nine, we see that Paul's prayer was answered. But not in the way it hoped. In effect, God said to Paul, I will not remove the thorn. But I'll do something better. I will give you grace to bear it. <laughs> Why do you think that happened? If God had removed that thorn in the flesh, then Paul wouldn't have to be dependent on God. God gave him grace because God's got wisdom. He's got wisdom from above. You want my power and strength to accompany your preaching? Well, the best way to have that is for you to be kept in a place of weakness. If we want God's power, we need to be in a place of weakness. We need to be in a place of dependence to him. There's something very beautiful in this verse, which we must not pass over. The, the literal translation on the first part of the verse is, and he kept saying to me, it was God's continuous answer to Paul's thrice repeated prayer. And it continues to be God's answer to his suffering people. If you're suffering right now and you're going through something, rejoice. Count it all joy. Seek him in your suffering. You see, because God is in us in the companionship when we seek him, when we're going through trials, tribulations and suffering. The son of God gives us a type of assurance that he's with us, that his strength is our enabling grace. Notice that God says that my grace is sufficient for you. He's not just speaking to Paul. Is speaking to every single person here this morning that his grace is sufficient for you, no matter what that suffering is, no matter what that situation is, no matter what you're going through in your life today, that his grace is sufficient for you. We don't have to ask him to make his grace sufficient. It already is. And the apostle is completely satisfied with the Lord's answer. And so he says, therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'd rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of the living God will rest upon me. I don't want to boast in my own strength. I don't want to boast about the things that I think that I'm doing. It's not about me. And when the Lord explained the wisdom of his actions, the Apostle Paul said in effect that that was the only way that he would want it to be. Instead of complaining, instead of grumbling, it was none of that. Grumbling and complaining about the thorn. He would glory in his infirmities. He would get down on his knees and thank the Lord for them. He would gladly endure them. If only he knows that the power of Christ might rest upon him. Oliver Saunders puts it in a way, he says, the world's philosophy is what can't be cured must be endured. And Paul testifies, what can't be cured can be enjoyed. So wonderful did he prove God's grace to be that he welcomed fresh occasions of drawing up the fullness. He said, I gladly glory. I even enjoy my fullness. 
It's when we are conscious of our own weakness and nothingness. That is when we depend upon the power of God. And it's when we are completely dependent upon him, that's when his power is manifested in us. Paul is obeying the word of the Lord in Matthew 5, 11, 12. He is rejoicing when men reviled and persecuted him. We know there is strength in weakness. And through the humiliation he suffered, Paul learned that the humble will be exalted and the proud would be humiliated. But what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And if you've been sealed with the Spirit of God and a and are sure of your salvation, then fight for the fulfillment of your dreams. And if you have an ounce of doubt about your salvation, then your salvation should be your priority. This is the most important thing that you will ever have. And the scripture here says in Matthew 16, what profit is it for us to gain the whole world and lose our own soul? You can't even enjoy a good life for some time, but not for eternity. Ensure of your internal salvation. Invest in your soul. When you fulfill this spiritual dream, all other dreams automatically become fulfilled at the right time because it is written. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you you see many people make the mistake of overlooking this piece of advice and just focus on on gaining material blessing they forget that the spiritual blessing paves the way for all other blessings we must be pursu pursuing the dream of our eternal salvation before attaining any other spiritual blessing. It's like chasing after the wind, the scripture says. We know there are loads of people who succeed materially. I know what it's like to be a very rich man and to squander wealth. It didn't last long in my case. 10 years, I came into recovery in 1996, two black bags, and I left the treatment centre, Cloud's house. In 1996, I was a millionaire by 2007, 2007. took 10 years. I'm a millionaire. Wow. Fantastic. Squandered it. Don't last long. When I look back, do I feel frustrated? Do I feel gutted about that? Yeah, of course I do. But I have no regrets about the past. But sometimes I look at my wastefulness, my lack, my disobedience, my greed. I look at all these things. And I think, It's horrible when you're in a place where you know you've been wasteful. And particularly, the inner critic of the enemy can be quite loud, the voices that can come in. So it's really important that we take a note of the trillions of voices that are in this world. 1 Corinthians 14.10 says, there are many 
and so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without significance. There are trillions of voices, inner voices, the voices of evil, the voices of the media, the voices of other people, all of them competing for your attention. And you can become a result of these voices. If I was to listen to the voices every day from the time I squandered the enemy telling me about the the things that he would that he would really hammer home to deter me, you're a failure, you're this, you're that, you're wasteful, you'll never again again. But loud in a it's enough to send you crazy, literally. It's no wonder mental health is on such a rise because of the voices that are going around in this world today. The voices, if we tend to be overrun by these voices, it can literally send you crazy. And in most cases, the objective of these voices is to ruin you, is to put you down. Voices of doubt. Disguised by cautionary voices. Voices of fear. Voices of anguish. Your own voice. And the more you confess defeat, the worse it is. You can be sure that when you meet someone you trust, you tell them about your problems. You vent your, your feelings. You get honest. Our, our, our program talks about honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. With these, we are well on our way. Honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. That's in our conversations. That's where we are in our feelings. That's where we are in our lives, where we are in our stumbling blocks, where we are with our fallen in our fleshes. You see, Paul was honest to the people. He was the apostle, but he told them about his weaknesses. He said, I'm going to boast about my weaknesses. So that the power of God can rest upon me. Hallelujah. I'm not looking forward to minus eight degrees, about 20 odd kilometers this Saturday. I'm going to boast in my weaknesses right now. I don't want to do it. Hallelujah. When I'm looking at this weather, they're talking about hiking, they're talking about spike boots and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, oh, my, oh, get me into St. Lucia, please. Can't wait. My weaknesses, I'm boasting right now. I don't want to go. <laughs> I'm wondering how I'm going to get through already. Is there any exit routes? Is there any turnoffs? They're talking about climbing and going around and they're going around some tricky movements. I'm like, ah, oh, no, it's ain't me. <laughs> there are doubts going on already in my mind. I'm not even there yet. There's a big part of me that's petrified. Because <laughs> I'm out of my comfort zone. And when we're out of our comfort zone, it sows some stuff into us. And that's why we need faith. To churn up those doubts. Because we can get lost. At church, you hear the word of God. And for a moment, you forget the voices of the world. You forget about your problems. You get into the midst of the spirit. You may be getting a bit of worship and you're in there. You know, you're forgetting about all your troubles, your, 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 the areas, the difficulties, the challenges, maybe the struggles. Because the message of faith cast the way down. Faith is awakened inside of you and you start believing in yourself and you start believing in God. You become strong. Your doubts start to diminish. Your faith rises and you feel great. All this is useless. If you walk out 
and then start listening to the thousands of voices out there and forget the voice of God. Forget the voice of faith. The voice that says, do not fear either. You're going to march up that hill. <laughs> the voice that says, I am with you always. The voice that says, be strong and courageous. The voice that says, I'm going to make you an overcomer. There will always be voices in the world. But we should only listen to the voice of our living God. Father, we thank you. Thank you. As in Deuteronomy 8, 17, 18, it says, Then you say in your heart, that my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power. It is he who gives you wealth. It is he who establishes you. His covenant is with you because he swore to your fathers as it is, this day today, which is Wednesday, the 28th of February, 2024. Because the word of Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. I would love that, Natalie. It's very easy to look at your achievements and think they're a result of your efforts. After all, you're the one who struggled for many days, months and years. I look back at my own struggles. And I can look back at my own achievements. And I know sometimes when I look back, particularly about my own life, that those achievements, some of them didn't last. And if you don't have a partnership with the Spirit of God, I can assure you they definitely won't last. Don't make the same mistake as me. Don't make mistakes. Many people make mistakes. How many people turn their backs on God because of a marriage, because of wealth and money? They forget what he's done and transform the blessing into a curse with their own hands. If you depend on God, then acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge God in all your achievements. Don't rely on the strength of your own arm. And whatever you undertake today, Make sure you partner in with him. Don't boast about your own conquests, about what you're good at. Don't boast in your own strength, boast in your weaknesses. Be humble and give God the honour. And only then will you be able to have that stability of life that you've dreamt of. Whatever the enterprise you lead today, be humble and give honour and glory to the living God. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, because your word is truth. Beautiful. Natalie, would you like to give us a song, did you say? Uh, yeah, hold on. I've literally just got to put this wire in the phone. Hold on. I can hear Ben and Holly. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay. I've been going on um, TikTok and I've been pra oh, oh, I've been praising um, Jesus on some of the Christian rooms in there and I've been absolutely loving it. It has been such a blessing. Amen. Well and I've got a proper set up now too. <laughs> right, hold on. Oh no, what am I doing? Sorry, I'm just trying to get Alfie ready for nursery as well. All right. Ivory, is it? He's free now. Yeah, no, it's unbelievable, isn't it? 
<sighs> it's crazy. Yeah, that that picture I sent um, Gemma, I was like, oh my God, that was ages ago. Unbelievable, wasn't it? <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Just Amen. agree. All right, I'm going to do, I'm going to sing you. So Will I. We need I, help. I love this song. This song gets We've been my heart challenged so much. like never before. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear the music? Can hear it loud and clear. Got a creation. There at the start for the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so and light I can see heart in everything you've made Every burning star, a signal of fire, of praise. If creatures sing your praise, it's so alive. God, do your promise. Don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. Thoughts you have spoken on nature and science, follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creatures still obey you, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reference, so will I. If the oceans roll your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high. The wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praise is still fall shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. This is my favorite bit coming up. These verses coming up now touch my soul so much.
God of salvation, you chased out my heart through all of my failures and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life so I can find it here. If you left the grave behind your soul in life, I can see heart everything you've done every part designed in a work of art called love if you gladly chose surrender so will I I can see a heart a billion different ways every precious one child you died to say if you gave your life to love them so will I like you would again a hundred billion times but what measure could amount to your desire you're the one who never leaves the one behind. Amen. That's beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Baba, we thank you that you bear our shame. Thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, that you died for us so that we could have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that you rise up so that we can rise up in you. Thank you, Lord, that we can continue to rise up in you. Fathers, we just bring our weaknesses, our problems, our troubles, the problems that we have, the issues, the difficulties, the challenges that we have in this world. Father, we just ask you to take this away from each and every single one of us as we rest in your power, as we rest in you. And Father God, we ask for your blessing to come upon us, to give us that peace that surpasses all understanding, because we know that your grace is sufficient for each and every single one of us, no matter where we are. May God bless you. Good to see you, Joanne. Um, good to see you. Um, you Natalie, lovely song. Um, been beautiful meeting this morning. I just believe that the Lord is just raising up an army here in Faith Walk, and it's just so beautiful to see what He's doing in this platform. Um, he just gives me a word of encouragement and He gives it to me every day, and I just want to pass it on to you. No matter what you think the situation is, just keep going and rest in me. <laughs> Keep going and rest in me. Keep going and rest in me. Keep going and rest in me. And count it all joy. Hallelujah. So I'm really excited. As much as I'm um, looking at this wintry, supposed to be a spring challenge, you know, <laughs> who's going to try it in December? I mean, that's how crazy we really are. So we put it back till March. And... Uh, uh, it's just really exciting that you guys um, are going to sponsor me. Hallelujah. For those that who haven't just yet, just give me a little word out there. Hallelujah. I'm expecting my faith walk expectation does lead to disappointment, may I add. But you know what? I live in hope. Hallelujah. Because I'm a man who speaks my heart. Hallelujah. That the faith walk ministry fundraising challenge is taking place this weekend and i'd love you guys to sponsor me hallelujah as i go on this 20 kilometer sas british 
army train grueling 18 millimeter prayer walk at the summit of the majestic penny fan which is the highest mountain in mid southern britain <laughs> and with surrounding peaks and a total vertical of 1134 um snowden <laughs> and we will be challenging that and I, as i said i'm not really looking at looking forward to it i want to thank those that have sponsored me and encouraged me and are praying for me hallelujah and um keep doing that because i'm going to need your prayers this weekend i'm going to need your strength uh to keep going to keep walking when i want to turn back i'm going to get to the end and i'll give you all a picture saying i got there in the end hallelujah because my faith is going to take me up that mountain hallelujah so all glory to god that he's given me the strength and the and, and the willingness and the desire to keep on keeping on as we say in our recovery and good to see you adam and it's good to see everybody here this morning may god bless you may god keep you may god continue to shine his face upon you our next meeting is um friday morning at 6 30 and uh i will be preaching on sunday uh at 8 p.m i don't know what the topic is but i'm looking forward to that uh so yeah you've been um listening to isaac uh, over the last few weeks and uh, we also have another series uh, in um, March which is Pastor Rock is going to be doing a two week series for us and that series is a really exciting series which I'm looking forward to Pastor Rock is doing a series on just to get it up It is the title for the series is Where is God in Tough Times? It's a question. I'll send you the link, Adam. God bless you. Thank you for that. Where is God in tough times? Going through the passage of Ezekiel 1. And for the 17th, Everything must speak of God's glory and God's purposes is equal to. So if you want to get up to speed with those, um, one of our series is in March, is equal one, is equal two. Yeah, that's going to be really um, interesting. Uh, also, uh, our evangelism team is also meeting up in Luton. Uh, again, we'll be worshipping and praising and ministering uh, in Luton on the 9th. If you want to join on that mission with us, I'll be looking forward to maybe hopefully seeing a, a few of you guys coming out with us and uh, experiencing uh, the goodness of the, the ministry and the outreach out in the street. Hope to see you guys there again. Um, you know, if if you're if you're part of this ministry, you know, please come and experience the fellowship that we have in these times. There's nothing better than these get-togethers. So if you can make it, I really appreciate it. If you could join us, because we'd just love to have you there, and we'd love to fellowship with you, and uh, we'd love to meet you, and we'd love to um, just be doing ministry together, because that's what it's all about, doing ministry together. Hallelujah. May God bless you all. And may God keep you and may God continue to shine his face upon each and every single one of you. If anybody's got any particular prayer requests, I'll take one or two right now, because I think it's always good to close in prayer. Hey, Ivor. Hi there, buddy. Hello, brother. I just want to, is it okay to lift you up for your, uh, for your walk this weekend? Oh, I'd love to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Heavenly you. Father, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, um, when two more are gathered in your name, there you are. So, Father, God, we just, uh, we just, we just lift our brother Ivor today, Lord, and we just thank you. We thank you, Father, for this ministry. We thank you, Jesus, for the love that's shown and the growth that comes through this ministry, Lord. We just uh, we just give you the glory. We give you all the praise, and for you, are worthy, Lord. Um, we just give you all the honor, Father. I uh, 
some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And my brother, Ivor, um, come this weekend, Lord, we just pray that um, you give him the lungs of wind, Lord, that you allow his lungs to whip the oxygen to just throw through his lungs, Lord, as he did, yeah. as he um, as he walks up that, that mountain. Lord, we know that if, if we say that this mountain shall be moved in your name, Lord, that it shall be moved. So, Lord, we just ask that that mountain, Lord, is moved for him, Lord, and that he just conquers that mountain in your name, Jesus, for your glory, Jesus, so he can bring uh, donations to, to the ministry, Lord, uh, and uh, that will support uh, those in need, Lord. We just uh, lift him up, Lord, and we just give, we just pray for strength, Lord, strength beyond understanding um, uh, and endurance beyond understanding, Lord, that, that we rest in you, Lord. You are our rest, you are our peace. Um, and so, Lord, I, I just pray that you just give him every step that he makes. And, Lord, I just pray over the over the team that he's with this weekend also, Lord, that they uh, they support each other, Lord, to lift each other, Lord. And in those times when um, they may become weary, Lord, that, that they all uh, can just press in to you, Lord, and, and then just pull their strength from you, Lord, for you are the, you are our strength, Lord. You are our grace. And, Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing in, in each and every one of our lives, Lord. And I just pray a hedge of protection around all of my brothers and sisters in the pool, Lord. Um, and we just pray, Lord, that you continue to develop each and every one of us to bring out the fruit, Lord, so that we may be fruitful in you, Lord, in the vine, um, so that we may bear fruit for you in your kingdom, Lord. Shine your light for us, Jesus, lead and guide us in your mighty precious name. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for that. And it would be um, such fitting if I didn't say how you could pledge or you could um, donate www dot faithful ministries dot co dot uk um or if you received the um the um the uh flyer that i've seen you you can use the qr code or you could use the paypal or you could donate via bank transfer to faithful ministries account number 603 Four eight two six two salt code thirty ninety eight ninety seven. All the information is on our website. Feel free to pledge and join a very very good well 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 worthy cause. Um, I pray that the Lord will bless you and you know and He will keep you and continue to shine His face upon each and every single one of you in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night. For those of you that are on the discipleship course, look forward to it. God bless. Amen. You. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Take care. Thank you, Ivor. I appreciate you. you. Thank you. God bless you, sir. God bless you.